Okay, so in our next few examples, we're going to look at integrals that consist of secants and tangents. So for those questions, as I reviewed on the board, let's do it one more time. Um, if you let u be equal to tangent x, then du will be secant squared, right? <clears throat> if you let u be equal to secant x, <clears throat> du will be secant times tangent. So for these questions, your goal should be either to reserve a secant square dx, uh, secant square x dx on the side, or to reserve a secant x tangent x dx on the side. Depending on which one you can reserve, everything else will have to be written in terms of what? Say, say you did this approach, the first one. You reserve the secant square on the side then everything else will have to be written in terms of what? Tangent x, right? If you reserve a secant tangent on the side, then everything else will have to be written in terms of what? Secant x. OK, so that, with that in mind, let's take a look at this next example, the integral of tangent squared times secant squared. <clears throat> Okay, there's already a secant square reserved, right? So this is going to be one of the easier ones. This can already be reserved as our du. If you are reserving that for your du, what should your u be? Tangent x. Then du is secant square. So the original integral can be rewritten as follows. What should I be writing for tangent square? u square. And for secant square x dx, du. Again, we end up with a very simple integral, right, which is simply u cube over 3. Plus c. And u being tangent. OK. Any questions about our first example? Once you get the idea of the sines and cosines, and you get this general idea about du being secant squared or du being secant times tangent, you will find that the same logic really applies, and uh, it's not going to be that bad, except that some of these questions can be done both ways, either letting u be tangent or secant. Um, so obviously, I will accept either answer if a question can be done more than one way. But know that sometimes the answers will look very different. You do it like with tangent approach, it will be one answer. With secant x, it will be one answer. But ultimately, one can actually show that the answers are equivalent. Here's our next example with secants and tangents. OK, we did that one. OK, let's do the integral of tangent x, secant x times secant cube. Excuse me. I should have said, let's do the integral of tangent x times secant to the 4x. I want to give you a moment to think about this one before we put the answer. So any thoughts on this question? Would you rather separate a secant tangent on the side or a secant square on the side? So I heard secant tangent. Let's just take the other approach just to see if we would get stuck if we take the other approach. Okay, so if I try to separate a secant square on the side for my du, what would that leave me with? Another secant square here, right? A tangent here. Now, if you, if you reserve a secant square x dx for your du, then everything else um, has to be written in terms of which expression? in terms of tangent, right? And in this case, it looks like we can actually accomplish that, right? Because secant squared, you can write in, uh, what, what is secant squared? It's, it's equivalent in terms of tangent. 1 plus tangent squared, right? We can do that, multiply the tangent out. It looks like this is going to work, OK? Now, here is another approach. This is what I was thinking when I first looked at this question. The other approach is rewrite the integral like this. Tangent x times secant x times secant cube x. In other words, I separated the um, secant to the 4 as secant times secant cube. So I'm going to separate this as my du. 
And everything else has to be written in terms of what? If this is my D, everything else has to be written in terms of secant, because U will be secant, right? So this is already ready to go, right? This is going to be U cubed DU. So this is even easier, as you can see. But it appears that you can do this question both ways. And if you're interested, we can look at the solution both ways, OK? You can do it that way also. So let's do it this way first, and then we'll go back to the other one. OK, so let u be equal to secant so that du equals secant x times tangent x. So the integral becomes, so can tell me what I should have in my integral now. Exactly. James, the suggestion is correct. U cubed du. I'm sorry, who, who, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was coming from you, but it was coming from Tim instead. Thank credit where the credit is due, right? Absolutely. Okay. So now let's integrate it. We get u to the 4 over 4 and put the u back in, of course, and u being secant x. Uh, how many of you did it the other way, letting u be tangent x? Several people did it that way. So let's also do it that way so you can check your answers as well. And again, please note that you know if you do one way or the other, as long as you've done the problem correctly, of course you're going to get full credit for it. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the same question, but now we're going to do the other approach. Tangent times secant to the 4. Um, and we're separating a secant square on the side for our du. So this is going to be reserved for the du portion. This is going to be converted into tangents, and we already mentioned that's going to be 1 plus tangent square, right? So if I rewrite this integral, it becomes tangent x times 1 plus tangent square x times secant square and letting u be equal to tangent. Here is what we have. u times 1 plus u squared du. Would everyone agree with this? I replace a tangent with u, right? The 1 plus secant square, I'm sorry, 1 plus tangent square with 1 plus u squared and I replace secant squared with du. How do you integrate this? First distribute, right? Like, like the last three examples we've done. Distribute and then integrate. So we've got u plus u cubed, the integral of u plus u cubed, and integrate each term. Put the u back in there, and we're done. Now, this doesn't look at all familiar. The other answer was what? Secant to the 4 over 4. So let me just write over here, just in comparison. The other answer we got was secant to the 4 over 4 plus c. Does this look at all equal to the new answer we got? Not at the first glance. They look so different, right? One is secant to the 4 over 4. The other one has tangents in it. And yet, I'm claiming that they are the same. And you're going to get you know, full credit if you do one or the other. How could we possibly see that these are really the same things? Yes, Tim? You mean right tangent square f secant square minus 1? In other words, there is, a, there is a relationship between tangents and secants. But if you look at the first one, secant to the 4 of x. Could we write that as follows? Don't forget the x. Okay, secant to the 4x. Isn't that secant squared times secant squared? In other words, 1 plus tangent squared multiplied by itself, right? If you were to expand this quantity, when you expand the first one, you're going to have 1. 1 times the fourth. That's just a constant. It's observed in the plus c. The constant disappears, okay? Uh, then 
2 times the first and the second, that gives you 2 tangent squared, except over 4. It's going to give you this piece right here, tangent squared over 2. And square the last piece, tangent squared to the second power, that's tangent to the fourth, multiplied it with the one fourth, and we have the pieces. So the only thing that was missing was the plus constant, but that is all, that's accounted for within the plus C. Again, you don't normally have to show me these are equivalent, but in case you were curious, it is possible. One fourth times the Correct. There's going to be an extra constant involved, but because you have a plus C here, plus C there, the constants are not that important. They can be absorbed yet as another constant. All right. There is one more example with secants and tangents. Let's do tangent to the power of 4x. Tangent to the 4x. And somehow we need a combination of secants and tangents to be able to solve this problem. So let's break one of these into and write it in terms of secants. So what is tangent squared once again? Correct. Secant squared minus 1. So one of them I wrote like that, and the other one I'm keeping as it is. Because I, if I convert both of them into secant squared minus 1, I'm going to have, in a sense... Another difficult problem to solve with just secants in it, and there's not an easy way to do that either. We want some combinations of secants and tangents. So I just rewrote one in terms of secant, left the other in terms of tangent. Okay. Let me now multiply tangent square with, with each of these pieces. See if that helps at all. Secant square x times tangent square x minus tangent square x. The first part of this, this first integral, do you see how to resolve that one? Let u be what in that case? If you let u be tangent, its derivative is what? Secant squared, so it's going to be u squared du, right? How about the second part? Do we know how to integrate tangent squared? Yes, that was one of the things we did on the first page today of the notes, right? When we reviewed things, we know how to integrate tangent square. So then we were done with the problem. Let's do it step by step. So for the first part, highlight it in red over there. Let u be tangent. Maybe we even did the same exact problem earlier. So the du is secant square. So that integral becomes the same as integral of u squared du. And the other part, the tangent square, I can write it as secant squared minus 1. That's something we reviewed earlier today, right? What is the integral of secant squared? Tangent. What's the integral of plus 1? 
this x, right? And why was it a plus at the end there? Plus x and not a minus x. Exactly. I distributed my negative sign into the second term of that binomial. The last piece in the puzzle is to put the u back in there, and then I'll answer any questions you may have. Just one moment. Just one. There, I turn my microphone back on. Okay, so you should be able to hear me now. So secant squared times secant squared. Uh, we're splitting secant to the fourth because we want to reserve a secant squared for our du. This means that the rest of the expressions has to be written in terms of the tangent function. So if our du is secant squared, u should be tangent x. So one of the secant squares will be reserved for the du. The tangent to the 5 remains as it is. That is already in terms of tangent, obviously. And the other secant square, we will write that one as 1 plus tangent square. Now going to the u substitution using the previously assigned u, we can rewrite this integral as... 1 plus u squared times u to the 5 du. And now this becomes a pretty typical um, integral. First multiply it out. And then integrate piece by piece. Finally place the u back and for, um, replace u with tangent x. And that is our final answer. Now you may want to try to see if you can do the same question by reserving a secant x uh, tangent x for your du portion and see if you can write everything else in terms of the secant function. So that, that means you would let u be equal to secant x, du would be secant times tangent, um, and it would be interesting to do the same problem that way. I believe it's a little bit more work based on my notes here, but it can be done. So if you're interested, solve the same problem that way, and don't worry if your answer looks different than the one we obtained here. There, your answer is going to include the secant function in it, whereas our answer over here included a tangent function in it. All right, so that concludes our lesson.